What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.7 beta 3 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes about two weeks after the release of beta 2 and one week after iOS 15 beta 1. Now, in addition to iOS 14.7 beta 3, we also got iPadOS 14.7 beta 3, watchOS 7.6 beta 3, macOS Big Sur 11.5 beta 3, and tvOS 14.7 beta 3. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.7 beta 3 and what is new. So starting off with the size of this update, you can see here, it came in at about 316 megabytes on my iPhone 12. That size will vary, of course, depending on your device and the version you are coming from. If you go and check out the build number here, settings general about 14.7. You can see the build here is 18G5042C. So we do have a C at the end of the build number there, which means that we should have at least one more beta of 14.7 before the final. If we go down a little bit further to the modem firmware down here, it's sitting at 1.80.01. So just a minor update to the modem in this update. So now let's talk about what is new here in iOS 14.7 beta three. And the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the reason that 14.7 public beta two never got released by Apple. So public beta testers never got a second beta for 14.7. And the reason for that was because of a major SIM card failure bug. So this mainly affected those with an eSIM and it would actually not allow these people to send or receive phone calls. They just had no cell service, you know, no data, no service whatsoever on their device after updating to 14.7 beta 2 and it actually turns out that this bug was even worse than we originally thought and it was worse than just having no service so a twitter user who had this issue tried to downgrade and restore his iphone only to find out that he could not even activate the phone afterwards so this bug actually bricked his device which is crazy and this is just yet another lesson to be learned to just not install a beta on your main device so luckily apple was able to replace it for him good customer service there it was under warranty so they were able to get him a new iphone but it is crazy that a beta pretty much bricked this guy's phone and he was not able to activate it from that sim card failure bug that we talked about in my follow-up video last weekend so i am assuming that this third beta does fix this bug i cannot imagine apple would go any further you know or release anything without addressing this bug first so a release of the public beta will confirm that this bug has in fact been patched because Apple would not push out a public beta with a bug like this still out there but I'm assuming that it has been fixed here in the third beta which is definitely going to be the biggest change in this update now iOS 14.7 also introduced HomePod timers so we do have timers with the HomePod now we can actually set these manually instead of asking Siri to set a timer for us so the text was you know really bugged out in beta 1 and then beta 2 fixed that and nothing has changed here in beta 3 but I do just want to point out that HomePod timers are a thing in 14.7 nothing was addressed in the release notes or anything for it though really the release notes didn't show anything once again for 14.7 beta 3 which is pretty crazy because Apple usually puts something in the release notes for every beta version but for 14.7 betas 1 through 3 really nothing at all has been in the release notes which is kind of strange Apple also released some new products today so first they released the all new Beats Studio Buds so we've seen these rumored and leaked for quite a while now and the rumors said that these were coming next month but Apple actually released these today so you can see here they come in at $150 so kind of a midway point between the AirPods and the AirPods Pro so this could be a good mid-range option if you're in the market for some new earbuds so they come in white black and red of course with that beats branding right there these do have active noise cancellation and they have transparency mode but they do not have an h1 or a w1 chip so you're not going to have some of the features that you get with like the airpods and the airpods pro but these will show up in find my and things like that so pretty cool again a good mid-range option between the airpods and the airpods pro and i think these are going to more so cater to those who just don't use an iphone this will probably be more for people who use android that would be my guess but let me know what you guys think about these Beats Studio Buds down in the comments below. And then also today, Apple released some new colors for their silicone cases. So also the MagSafe cases as well. So you can see the new colors right here. So Sunflower is one, Cloud Blue, and Electric Orange. So those are three new colorways for Apple's silicone cases. And these of course are the same $49 as usual for the silicone cases there. So pretty neat colors. My favorite of course is going to be this one right here, the Electric Orange. 
product. I really like the way that looks. But aside from that, really nothing else has changed here in iOS 14.7 beta 3. We do have some minor verbiage changes and things like Siri and search and then down to dictation history. This is a little bit longer than it was on previous builds. But aside from just really small things like that, you're not going to see anything new here in iOS 14.7 beta 3. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, there were a lot of reports of bad cell connectivity once again in beta 2. So I'm not sure if this had anything to do with the SIM card failure or what, but iOS 14.7 in general seems to be having issues with the cell connectivity just as a whole across the board for eSIM and regular SIM card users. So not sure what's going on there. When I was using it on my device, I didn't really have a ton of issues with cell connectivity. I did have very spotty connection, but it didn't actually cut out completely at any point. It would just be really slow and just disconnect at random times, but it would never just completely stay out for like a long period of time. So I'm hoping that beta three does improve cell connectivity. And if you were having issues with that on beta two, let me know in a comment down below if beta three does fix that. Now, also inside of the music application, obviously we do have the music cue bug still here in beta three. It's actually in iOS 15 as well. So it's not showing it right now, but and it doesn't happen every single time. But that, of course, is where you cannot move that first song right there in the queue. So iOS 15 beta one still didn't even fix that. So iOS 14.7 beta three obviously did not fix that either. So that's pretty unfortunate. And the AirPlay to HomePod as well, like handoff or just AirPlaying to a HomePod is also very buggy here in 14.7 beta three. iOS 15 does does improve this a lot so iOS 15 beta 1 does improve the airplay to HomePod in terms of the speed and it always shows up on the now playing screen you don't have to manually go into it inside of the control center there but uh yeah overall it's pretty slow here still on 14.7 beta 3 which is unfortunate because i've been talking about both of those bugs for like months now and then as far as green tent goes some users have reported that green tent has been fixed in ios 15 beta 1 but after ios 14.7 beta 1 a lot of people said that it's gotten much better so it seems like apple is addressing this slowly but surely and ios 14.7 and ios 15 appear to be addressing this issue you know for the most part some people are saying it's still not fully gone but they are saying it is improving and of course i don't have a device with that green tint or any type of tint, so I cannot test that myself. So now let's talk about the performance here in iOS 14.7 beta three, and it felt really, really quick right once I installed the updates, a lot more than beta one or beta two. And that could be just kind of not really placebo, but after coming from a buggy iOS 15 beta one, it could have just been that it seemed a lot faster and smoother just because I've been so used to using iOS 15 beta one. But if we go into the Geekbench scores here, I did actually run a Geekbench score or Geekbench test and I scored a 1601 on the single core and a 4125 on the multi-core, which is actually very impressive. And if we compare that to beta two, you can see there a 1601 versus a 1591 and a 4125 versus a 4086. And actually, if you look down the entire line right here, those scores are pretty high. I mean, some of the highest I've scored on a beta release or even a public release. So very good performance here from iOS 14.7 beta three, really respectable scores there. And hopefully that does improve with the next beta and of course the final as well, because 14.6 did have some performance issues, which you guys definitely expressed in the comments of that video. And as far as battery life goes, battery life is gonna be about the same as beta two, I would assume. Now, I never had any issues with battery life in 14.6 or 14.7, but a lot of people did report bad battery drain on iOS 14.6. It was all over the forums all over you know news articles posted about it everything so hopefully ios 14.7 does fix the bad battery drain but as for me personally i've not had any issues with battery life in 14.6 or 14.7 on any of my devices so now what is next for apple so today is monday june 14th and we are currently on a two-week beta cycle for ios 14 and same with ios 15 so let's talk about 14.7 first so we will probably get a beta 4 so we're currently on beta 3 but since we have a C at the end of the build number, that means that we should have at least one more beta of 14.7. So we're currently on a two week cycle, but Apple could very easily switch that to a one week cycle. So it's either going to be the week of the 21st or the week of the 28th where we get 14.7 beta four. And I would predict that the final version of 14.7 will likely be out in the beginning of July. I don't think Apple's going to be able to get this out before June ends. So my guess is going to be early July for the iOS 14.7 final release. Now, as far as iOS 15 goes, we got iOS 15 beta one last week on June 7th. And Apple always waits at least two weeks in between betas for a major release like iOS 15. 
So that means that we should see iOS 15 beta 2 on the week of the 21st. So next week, likely on a Monday or Tuesday, but of course any day is possible just because it's Apple. So we should see beta 2. Now as for public beta testers, Apple said July. So I would assume that's going to be released on the same day as developer beta 3. So developer beta 3 and public beta 1 are likely going to be the exact same build and those will be out in July. So July 4th, of course, is right there. That is a holiday. And the 5th is going to be the day that it's acknowledged. So I would say maybe on July 6th is when we could possibly see iOS 15 beta 3. And that is going to be also the day that we see the public beta. So it could be the following week on the 12th, but I cannot imagine Apple goes any further than the week of the 12th to release the public beta of iOS 15, unless there are just a ton of bugs. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.7 beta 3. Really not much to talk about. And I didn't want to drag this on forever because I know a lot of you guys are interested in iOS 15. And really, there's not too much going on with iOS 14 at this point. I mean, there's really not too many bugs outstanding aside from the bugs I talked about. I mean, we have green tint. There's really no features in iOS 14.7 aside from the HomePod timers and things like that. So really not much to talk about, but I did want to bring you guys this video and let you know about this update just because that's what I do for every update, no matter how small it is. So if you guys appreciate these videos and if you enjoyed this video overall, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe for a lot more content, including iOS 15 coverage all throughout the rest of the year. But of course, I will be covering iOS 14 as well because we still will be getting iOS 14 releases all the way until September when iOS 15 officially releases. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.